Hi, so in this video I want to share how to create a series of floors uh, using Grasshopper. And so uh, I'll start here and we're going to need a base geometry. So I'll start with a polygon. And this polygon, we can pick how many segments, the radius, where it's located, and if it has a fillet. So for now, let's just give it a radius of, I'll say 12 feet, and I'll multiply by 12 to turn it into inches. Now that's because I'm using inches in my drawing file and that's what I'm used to working with. But technically you could use any slider here. So I'll plug that right into the radius and we have the ability to kind of increase and decrease that polygon. So let's go ahead and take this polygon and turn it into a surface. So to turn that into a surface, we'll go to the boundary surface and turn this polygon polyline into this surface. Now we can also fill it the radius. So if I slip this down, hold alt to make a copy, we could use this slider to round off the edges using a fillet. Let's see here. Yep. So this kind of rounds it off. If you don't want to round it off, you can just leave it at none. The other thing is if you want a four sided shape, this is where we can bring the number four, put that into the segments, and with this we can cycle through the various shapes. Now, the smallest shape you can create is three, so this is where we can go to minimum and just use three as a minimum number to just do a three shape and progressively increase it. So, let's continue on. We'll use the hexagon and we'll take this surface and we're just going to extrude it at first. Now, this is going to create our floor slab. So I just brought in a extrude component. I'll plug in the surface into the extrusion component and I'm going to extrude it up. So this is where we're gonna use the Z vector in the positive direction. And I will do unit Z, plug that into the direction. And this is where I can get create a slider for our floor slab. So this is our base geometry for our building. In, I'm using a polygon, but you can use any shape, even here in Rhino. So you can kind of bring it into Grasshopper, but I'm just creating a fully parametric here for uh, this example. So let's relabel these. Number of sides. This is going to be our floor slab thickness. So this is where we're starting everything off. And now we can go ahead and take this and create the series of floors. Now, do you see that it's kind of overlapping this one and this one? That's where I can take some of this information, middle click, and disable the preview. Cool. Now let's take this and move it up to create the first floor. So I'll bring in a move component. And we're going to take this slab, plug that into the geometry, go in what direction are we going to move it up? In the Z direction. So I'll go to Z. And we'll give it a dimension. So for that, I like to take this and copy paste or you can slide and hold alt to copy it and with this one we can pick let's see 15 foot 15 foot floor to floor okay so now that we have this notice that we only created one floor now if we want to create more we don't want to go ahead and copy this move and do it over and over we want to create not just one number of 180, but we want to create a bunch of numbers so we can create more floors. Now for that, we'll bring in a series component, which I like to name like the copy component because uh, there's no copy component as you would find here, like a copy, things like that. You'll use the series. So in here we have 180. So that's how far our floor to floor is going to be. So this is going to be our step. 
our count is going to be how many floors. Now, by default, it'll say 10, but let's go ahead and double click here and bring in a five, saying we actually want five copies, stepping 180, starting at zero. So when you look at the Z series here, you have zero, 180, 360, 540, and 720. And so those are the numbers that we'll, we'll be using for our floors. So now that we have that, our count can decrease and increase to accommodate more floors, which gives us more numbers here. And that's plugged into a Z vector because that's where we're moving it. We're moving it up. And this gives us the result here on the move as to how many floors. Now we can take this, disable preview of that extrusion, and here we go. We have a series of floors. So this will give us our number of floors. This, our building size. Or no, that's wrong. So I'll relabel this because I copied that over. This is going to be our floor to floor. Great. So we successfully created a building that has multiple floors now. If you want to create an outside skin for it. So let's go ahead and increase the size of it. And let's play around with the parameters a little bit to see if we're still kind of working here. So this creates a rectangular building and you can kind of keep changing the shape of it, which I think is pretty cool. So let's keep it at four for simplicity. And now what we're gonna do is create the outside skin. Now, how do we do that? We're gonna take our base geometry, which is this, and we're gonna extrude it up to the top. Now, how do we get it all the way to the top if we don't have a number of the total? How do we do that? So let's go ahead and bring in an extrude component. Let's plug in our polygon into our base. And then it will go in the Z direction. So we're going to extrude it up. But the calculation is going to be 15 or 180 multiplied by 10 and that gives us our height because it's our floor height multiplied by how many so let's do that multiplication and i'll multiply this number 180 which is the floor to floor height and the number of floors giving us a, a 18, 1800 as our number so that is what we will plug in into our Z vector here. Now, do you see that we go from this floor all the way, way past it? That's because we start from here and it also creates the top floor. So depending on whether you want that to be your top floor or you want it to end here, the only thing that you would do to end it here is you would do subtract, right? So we have that max height and we're going to subtract one floor height. So let's move this over. So we have our 18 hundred and we'll subtract 180. Now, when we plug this into the Z vector, it goes all the way up to here. Now, do you see that we are still missing that height? So that's where we would add a floor slab amount. So notice that we can keep doing math to add values that we already have existing. So let's go here to add plus plus sign. And I'll go here to this number plus the floor slab thickness. So using the numbers we already had used, now I'll plug this in to override that and notice that now it goes from the floor all the way to the top slab. And we can come here and increase or decrease the number of floors and this remains consistent.
if we change the segments, it remains consistent. Interest, the other interesting thing is if we fillet the edges, it still remains consistent because we're doing a straight extrusion. Now, if we took these floors and we start rotating them around, we can no longer do this because this is an extrusion in the vertical direction. So I just wanted to share with you how to create that floor and exterior facade. With this, we can go to things such as lunchbox and we can subdivide the exterior with other things. But this gets more into uh, surface subdivision and things like that, um, which it gets a little bit more complicated. So I just wanted to share with you this um, so you can kind of play around with it. I'll share the script and everything in the description for you to play with. If you have any questions, let me know. Uh, and if you want to contact me, look in the description also. I have more information there. So thank you for watching and I hope to see you next time.